All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a fun and exciting process of nickel plating. Um, you can nickel plate anything that's metallic. Um, at least I've been able to have pretty good luck doing so. Um, and nickel plating isn't just stuck to nickeling. Um, with experimentation, this is almost how you change anything to another color. Um, say if you had something that was uh, brass to nickel, or say you had something that was steel and you wanted to look brass. You could actually do the same process with brass, but instead of doing this whole process and making the solution with nickel, you would do it with brass. But today, we're going to stick with nickel and nickel alone. Now, I will try to leave some links in the description about where I find my nickel. I buy it off Amazon. Um, it comes in these little strips. I usually cut them in half. This is just a full strip that came in, and I couldn't find my other smaller half for right now. So as a demonstration today, we're going to make the solution. Um, and this is how we do it. All right, so we're going to start with a glass container. It can be plastic. It can be glass. Just cannot be metal. Because the entire idea of this is that the nickel is in vinegar. Vinegar and a little bit of salt. Nothing else. This is just regular vinegar. All right, so now that we have our vinegar in our glass container, we will put our nickel strips. And like I said, I buy them in strip form. And this is how it usually shows up, right there, just one long strip. Cut it in half. You don't need that length of nickel beginning off. So, like I said, this is just half of one. And if you notice, it's eroded away quite a bit. And there's a reason for that, and you'll see. So, now that we have our nickel in the vinegar, we need a power supply. Any power supply will do as long as it's DC. Now you can use a big honkin power supply like mine, which is not preferred. They make a very nice one on that you can buy in a million places, and I'll try to find one on Amazon that is adjustable, where it'll actually have an adjustment for your voltage and your amps. I'll try to supply a picture and a link for one. That is the preferable. But you don't need this. You don't need this at all. You can end up with just a battery if you need to. This is just a six volt battery. And the difference between voltage and amps in this process is time. That's it. And there is a more complex part to this. Um, with more voltage and more amps, the faster this will go. But there is a, a Goldilocks zone on doing really good parts because you can do something really fast with this, but the nickel might be very thin. And being very thin, it can wear off quite fast. And that was some of the th experiences that I've had early on. And if I tried to put the nickel on too thick, too fast, it can flake off. It'll actually start to get this pitting look to it and flake off. So today, and another solution for power is an old phone charger. Uh, a regular wall wart style phone charger. Now if you look, the most important part is your output. This one is 5.3 volts at 650 milliamps. This will work just fine. And to use one of these old phone chargers, cut the cable. When you cut it, there'll be two main wires on the inside, your positive and your negative. Now, at first, if you don't have a way to tell between positive and negative, there's a very easy solution by doing this where you won't need a voltmeter. If you have a voltmeter, perfect. But if you don't, all you have to do is, is connect the positive and the negative lead, which either end, doesn't matter right now, to your nickel solution. When you plug this in, and I was simulating plugging that in by turning on my power supply, you'll notice that one side will bubble very lightly at first and the other side doesn't. The side that bubbles is your negative lead. And what is happening right now that the power supply is on, your 
positive side right here is actually the electrons are going across the vinegar to the negative side. So there's particles it's actually taking from this piece of nickel and it's making this gap all the way across and hitting this side. And when this happens, it's actually going to drop off some nickel in the solution every now and then. And at first, this is not a usable solution right now because there's not enough nickel inside the vinegar to give you a good outcome. So all we do now is, is you plug these two leads in to your two pieces of nickel and very important as well is that these leads do not touch the vinegar. The only part you want in the vinegar is the nickel. All right? You're going to let this run. Now you're going to let this run for a long time. It'll probably run now uh, anywhere between 8 to 24 hours depending on your power supply. With this guy, which is a 12 volt 19 amp power supply, um, it took me, I want to say, about 15 to 16 hours before I had a usable solution. And I have my other solution right here, and it's just, I keep it in a big glass container. And you could store this stuff definitely. It does not go bad. The only way it goes bad is if some other metal gets introduced into the solution. For instance, if I'm doing brass plating, if I accidentally connected this piece of brass to the positive side and stuck it in, the brass is now coming off this and trying to make its way over to the negative side. Your part that you are going to plate is always going to be on the negative side. All right, And we'll get that to that point in a little bit. So now we set back, we do something else, and we come back and check on this every 35, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. All right. And once it becomes a darker solution, it's ready to use. Now there's one small other thing. As you notice, I only have a little bit of this in there. Try to have more of it in there. If you notice that this side is kind of worn away, this side was always used on the positive side. And that's why, because it's coming from this end, and coming to this end and sticking. So there's technically literal parts of this nickel floating through the solution, making its way to this side and sticking. This side will grow, this side will shrink over time. Now, what I like to do is, is when I'm doing this solution, I'll, every hour, flip the leads. So, all the nickel that's been coming to this side will now flow to that side. Because all we're doing in this beginning part is making the solution. Nothing else. In making the solution, we just need the nickel ping-ponging back and forth between these leads. And right now, it's going this direction. Later on, in about an hour, flop, you know, switch, you know, change the leads over. So it comes from this side to this side. Pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, so it's been about two hours now, and I'm back at my solution. And as you can tell, it's, it's starting to pick up color. I'm starting to turn this greenish, bluish color. Keep it going. It's getting better. Now you're going to want about to get it darker than this, but you're getting close. Like I said, a really good rule of thumb is give it about 10 to 12 hours and then you know there's plenty of it in there to to give yourself good results all right i'll bring you back when the solution's closer to being done all right guys it's following day i let it run for about 12 hours last night and as you can see she's nice and greenish bluish color this is perfect and the more you use this solution as well the darker it's going to get and like i said it doesn't go bad unless you mix in another metal on accident and the biggest contributor to accidents is putting your positive lead here that's touching your nickel allowing that to somehow get into the solution uh, say you're clipping it on the side and you have the solution really high and any part of this lead right here touches that solution, that metal is coming off from the positive side. And this is nickel plated, but it's also a piece of steel underneath, um, you know, stamped steel. And it'll end up polluting that steel in there. And once there's, it's, it is polluted, the, the solution is polluted, 
you'll start seeing this nasty fogging on the solution uh, or your part when you're actually trying to nickel plate it. I've personally never had this happen to me, but learning this process, um, I've seen pictures and people telling me that this is what's happened to them. But as long as you store it, um, you know, with a nice cover and a plastic container, a glass container, whatever, it doesn't go bad. And all right, now that we're we have a nice solution going, um, and the solution is ready, let's talk about nickel plating a part. Okay, so now we have our part. We're going to nickel plate. Now, very important thing about nickel plating is it is extremely thin. Even when it's thick, it's not. The thick piece of nickel is not, a nickel coated part is not thick. I mean, you're talking like a thou, maybe two thou. And so any imperfections in the metal will not be covered up like a paint. The metal, if you want the metal to look pretty and polished and shiny, it needs to be pretty polished and shiny to before you nickel plate it. If it is pitted, whatever, it's just going to be a piece that's going to look silver now that's going to be pitted. Um, you know, it will change colors to a silver, but a pretty shiny, polished nickel like everybody thinks, the metal needs to be pretty shiny and polished. All right? So any scratches, any imperfections in the metal will not be covered up by nickel. So that's the most important part. Make sure you grab your piece and make sure it's ready for whatever you want it to be done you know, a, a sanding up to like a 1200 grit and then a polishing on a polishing wheel to get that beautiful deep shine, all right? I'm gonna go put a tiny bit of polish on this just to make it so, you know, we get best results. All right, so now we're getting ready to nickel plate this part. All right, now what's important is remember, like I said, with the leads not touching the solution. That is only really important on the positive side because anything that enters the solution on the negative side is going to be covered up. So on the negative side your, your leads can definitely go into the solution. No big deal because as I said before everything goes from the positive and transports to the negative side and on the negative side nothing's coming off. Things are being put on to the part. So don't be concerned about dipping your actual part into the solution and have the leads touching. It's not a big problem at all, okay? So now that we have this clipped on, that lead clip to the actual nickel that's in the solution, let's start nickel plating. All right, so we're just gonna stick this into the solution. And my power supply has a a large capacitor and that's what you hear that large whining. You see how it's bubbling? That's good. Now you usually would stick this and let her hang and just let her relax for a little while. This does not take long with my power supply. It actually, believe it or not, we'll take it out and look it's already starting to change color. It's kind of hard to tell but it's it's about halfway there already. But that's really thin. You want more on there so we'll let it go for a little bit longer and this does not limit you for the size of your part. Your container limits you in your solution amount. Um, when we get to the end of this video I'll show you. A, I did an entire gun uh, quite a while ago because uh, I ended up buying a Pieta brass framed uh, 58 Remington. Uh, the Remington New Model Army and it was brass framed and I'm not a big fan of brass framed guns. They're great, and you know, you sometimes you come across these deals that you just don't pass up. But one more quick thing to add to this is um, the further away your nickel anode is, um, you'll notice that if you move it closer, it speeds up dramatically. So those with lower power supplies, now you don't want it to touch, but those with a lower power supply, this might help you speed your times up. Another thing to remember too is I've noticed when doing like a larger or more complex pieces that there's almost like a shadowing effect. You kind of want to walk this thing around your part or move your, you know, leave it over here and move your part around. Um, 
because you'll notice that it, it kind of, instead of coming at it from everywhere, it, it comes from here, right? And even though there's a bunch in the solution, that's the whole idea, the more there is in the solution, the more it, it can take from the solution. But uh, we'll pull this, this guy out and see how she's coming. All right. As you can see, it is very much now nickel plated. It is shiny silver. And then we'll go back to our brass side. And it's coming out very nicely. Maybe a little bit longer. And uh, when this part is done, I'll bring you guys back. And one other thing is... If you notice, I'm doing this part, just the top, and that's just because this is a spare part. I'm not needing it to be nickel plated. This is for demonstration purposes. But say if you have a larger object that can't fit in the solution, this is an easy and very viable way to do this. Um, even when I did my, my Remington, I actually had to do it in two, basically two halves. Um, and yes, you do one side till you pretty much cons like well that it's done. It looks right. It feels thick. It, it it looks right, and that's the best way I can go off of this. I'm sure there's more scientific ways of doing this, but I personally look at it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Go as long as I can because I want it as thick as possible, and uh, it, it'll look a little hazy when you take it out, and you use a little bit of you know just regular metal polish on it and it, it'll look perfect for you now what you want to do is is make sure like if you are doing it in two parts you know do the other side make sure you cross that area a little bit um, and just polishing it it'll go away and you can't tell um, at first yes you can tell a little bit you'll see the little a little line like this even in the nickel um, and once you polish it, it that completely goes away so that is almost everything I can completely think about for this process and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this thing out now and hit it with a little bit of uh, polish and get you guys some good pictures of it. And uh, we'll conclude this video, all right?